Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good day to all of you. I'm going to talk about the key development of Captopril. Is one of the case studies I use in my um, medicinal chemistry lecture. So if you see the overall view here, there are six milestones that uh, you should know. Yeah. So Captopril starts off um, from a nine amino acid peptide. Yeah. The um, this triprotide is actually a good lead molecule. Yeah, is the product is a very good lead molecule, but it is a poor drug. Why is it a poor drug? Is because is it's based on peptide molecule. The IS fifty of the protein is of zero point nine micromolar. It's not so bad, yeah. Considering that you you really want to to go down to if you see down here in uh, elanaprilat. To nanomolar, nanomolar would be a really good strength, yeah, for to for a drug. Okay. So, tiprotide is a very good lead molecule, but there are further development needed to be done on this molecule to make it very stable, yeah, stable enzymatically as an oral oral drug, yeah, and also uh, at the same time. Um, it should be uh, made not just stable. It is should also be made uh, more drug-like. All right. So from this lead molecule, on further development, yeah, um, the the researcher actually uh, managed to get succinyl proline. So this succinyl proline. It's actually amino acids, yeah. Um, and the IS50 is about 628 micromolar, which is, in one sense, is worse than the lead molecule um, diprotide. Uh, but a good thing, yeah, what would be the improvement here is that this succinylproline is much simpler and it's much also simpler and easier to synthesize compared to this nine amino acid peptide yeah so um, the next uh, milestone for captopril to, to form captopril is in the um, addition of the methyl group here e, and the whole molecule is uh, give, is given a code name of sq13297 yeah so now you can see once they have added in the, the methyl group, um, the IS50, um, you know, the value has dropped to 52 micromolar. Okay, this is a tip for you. The smaller the value of the IS50, the more potent, the more potent is the molecule. The concept if I can summarize the concept, it's like a chili padi concept. Chili padi, if you take chili padi compared to a normal chili, chili padi is smaller but is more pedas than the um, the chabai, yeah, the, the 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 normal uh, chili. All right. So please remember that. Don't get confused here. Yeah? All right, so the third development, the third milestone in uh, the captopril is actually the formation of captopril uh, itself, whereby the uh, carboxylic acid is replaced further with this thiom thio group. All right, I'll explain further what's, what's the significance of each of the, uh, the, the, the improvements. Yeah? And they also retain, and at the same time, they retain the meta group here with a change in configuration from the R group to the, from the R configuration to the S configuration. With that, with those two changes, what happens is that the IC50 drop further. Actually, in fact, you know, um, it has a two-fold increase. So the uh, IC50 of April is 23 nanomolar, 
come not oh, sorry it's not even uh, uh you know a uh, twofold increase it's actually um more than twofold increase this is in nanomolar and that is in micromolar So captopril has been uh, a good drug and is still being uh, currently used in, the house, in hospitals. And a further improvement of captopril resulted in the um, extension of structure here. They put a benzyl, benzyl group here. And also, they have replaced the thio group back to the um, carboxylic acid or carboxylate um, or ethyl, carbox, uh, ethyl, ethyl ester in the case of uh, an anapril, yeah? So, and then there are further improvement um, for this uh, lisinopril, but uh, I think uh, for the syllabus, we stop at uh, an anapril, yeah? Okay, let's just have a quick look um, at each of the uh, development. The case study, you can actually have a look at uh, two uh, chapters in Patrick, chapter 23 and chapter 15. All right, and these would illustrate these case studies would illustrate the concepts and principles in medicinal chemistry. Yeah? Okay, now for the first milestone, as I've mentioned, um, they have to make it more enzymatically stable. Yeah, because they want to formulate this particular um, uh, molecule as an oral drug. Yeah. Um, and as you know, oral drug has, has a high compliance compared to injection or other routes of administration. Yeah? So um, the strategies they use here is simplification, whereby they simplify the lead molecule yeah, from the, um, the long peptide chain down to only, um, if you see here, down to only about... Um, So this is one amino acid, all right? That's probably, that's one amino acid. That two amino acids and maybe three. So that's about. So they have actually simplified the, um, the long peptide chain to, to this shorter, simpler molecule, all right? This part of the molecule in the tiprotide is retained further, knowing that this part has uh, binds to the uh, target enzyme um, quite strongly. Now, the next um, optimization strategy that they actually use in the development of captopril is bioesters. So the carboxylic acid, yeah, in the um, in the um, Sassanil so proline is then changed to a thio group. Both will give a similar ion interaction with zinc. So they said, wow, why not? Yeah, because um, the problem with carboxylic acid is, is that uh, once in the body, it will pose bioavailability problem. Yeah? So um, they need to change. To, once they change the carboxylic acid to a thio group, um, the oral bioavailability, bioavailability of the, um, uh, the molecule has improved further. So have a look at this. Yeah, this is um, actually uh, captopril. Yeah, not uh, is improved from. This is a, a better molecule compared to SQ one three two nine seven, whereby you see that there is um, the CH three. Yeah, this is retained from the uh, SQ three one three two nine seven, and they actually included the thio group as well here. So the thio group can still interact with the zinc. This methyl group is important because it actually interacts with the S one pocket, and the rest of the molecule can also interact um, as in they interact in the um, with the natural natural substrate, which is a diprotide. Uh, yeah. If you read in Patrick, what happens is that uh, this is actually to me is uh, the, the, the discovery of Cartopril and Anapril and so on is actually um, a, a miracle, yeah? Because 
um, back then, when they discovered this molecule, when they discovered this molecule, they don't even know how the target looked like. Yeah. So through a lot of exploration, there's a lot of research. I think this the, this research took them about 50, ten to fifteen years to come to a point whereby they are able to um, figure out, you know, the these little pockets in the in the um, in the target. So they know more or less um, how would the target look like, where would um, the parts of molecule uh, bind to the target, and so on. Yeah. So this is this this is one I think one of the classic um, uh, case study for medicinal chemistry, and I think it's one of the miracles that they managed to figure out the, how the target looked like and how the the substrate and later on the different intermediates. Uh, lead molecules can actually bind to the to the target. Yeah? Okay, um, so this is important. Yeah, and then they realize that in addition to the S1 pocket, they realize that there's S2 pocket, which is much bigger, and the the amino acids the amino acids surrounding here are actually uh, mostly aromatic. So in other words, yeah, in other words. Um, they will confer a hydrophobic interaction uh, in this S2 pocket. Um, they improve onto captopril. Yeah, if this is captopril. Yes. Let me just. This is captopril. Yeah. So what they do is they retain. Remember uh, uh, again, one of the principles of chemistry is that you retain the essential one, the one that binds to the target molecule, and you discard or you remove the non-essential. So in this case, what is essential is the S1, the interaction with the S1 pocket uh, that is being uh, conferred uh, by the CH3 uh, in captopril that they retain in here. Okay. And then to exploit uh, the S2 pocket, which is mostly, um, they found there's mostly aromatic amino uh, acids there, they actually install this benzyl group. Yeah, um, which is hydrophobic, and that gives us another prelate. Yeah, a, a more potent, a, a more potent um, uh, ACE inhibitors. All right. So if you see, um, I've got to shift the molecule a bit so that you can see um, the how the interaction can happen. Yeah. Um, so. Um, in captopril, you have this uh, proline uh, will actually interact with this um, salt, uh, this arginine, yeah? And then there's interaction between this carb uh, carbonyl with the OH group here. And, and then the CH3 re uh, remains there, interacting with the S1 pocket. And then the um, new extension, yeah, the benzyl uh, group here, will then interact with the S2 pocket, which is uh, mostly uh, hydrophobic in nature. The CH, uh, CO2, so now in Ananda Prelat, um, the sulfur, the thiol group, has been replaced with back to, back to carboxylic acid. And that retains the uh, interaction, the ion interaction that uh, is expected. Yeah. So why change um, from why change from um, a thio group to a carboxylic acid group? Um, the reason is because um, in captopril, even though it's a good drug, um, it has these uh, side effects uh, in some patients. It gives off persistent coughing uh, in some patients. So it, it's, not, it's not nice when really. you have hyperpressure and then at the same time you, you are coughing. Yeah. So um, they figure out that uh, the side effects due to the uh, thio group. So once they change the thio group to uh, back to carboxylic acid, yeah, um, that side effects goes away. So there's there's little of the coughing side effects in the uh, nala prelat, yeah. In the first place, why they change from carboxylic acid to a thio group is because they want to solve one problem. The problem is on the bioavailability. But now in, in Alaprilat, they change it back to carbo from thio group back to carboxylic acid. So once they, they've done that, now they have to figure out how to how to solve the problem, the, the poor 
uh, bioavailability problem. Yeah, because if you see in in this um, uh, analaprilide, yeah, um, you've got a number of um, functionalities that will actually um, get ionized under the right condition, under the right pH. Yeah, for example. Yeah, um, carboxylic, carboxylic acid here has got a pKa of 2.3. On the other end of the molecule, it's got carboxylic acid here. It will um, has a pKa of 3.39. Yeah, which is more acidic. You remember, uh, if you remember uh, my lecture on tetracycline, you should be able to figure out which is more acidic in here. And at the same time, the NH, the NH as well has got um, different pKa, yeah? For the enalapril, the NH actually has got, uh, the pKa is 5.49, whereas in enalaprilat, which is with the free carboxylic acid, is the original drug, yeah? The enalapril is the pro-drug um, with a um, ethyl ester um, functionality in here. So enalaprilat has got 8.02. So that brings in question like, um, what about absorption? Yeah? Um, in this case, um, apart from it gets ionizes uh, and so on, one of the reasons why um, enalaprilat is not a, a, good, a good drug is because these two, yeah, this can ionize, can, can get uh, charged. And then uh, what happens is that it can actually form zeta ion, um, uh, an internal zeta ion. So once it's charged and it actually form the internal zeta ion, then this compound um, has a, a much poorer absorption compared to its um, pro drug, yeah, in anapril, yeah. So anapril can be absorbed easier, better, better permeability as well. Once it gets into the into the blood. Blood, uh, blood uh, sorry, it crosses when it crosses through and gets into the bloodstream. Yeah, it'll be um, you know uh, cleaved off. The ester can be cleaved off easily and form the parent drug. So um, the activation of the pro drug and anapril is by the hepatic asteresis. To recap, there are six milestones. Um, in the, the development of captopril, I think I should change this one to instead of captopril, it should be the key development of enalapril. Yeah. Uh, remember, uh, the first one involves in A. So in A, it involves the simplification of the lead molecule. In B, is the addition of the CH3. All right. Um, in C, what happens is that there is bioisosteer whereby the carboxylate, carboxylate acid is replaced with a thiol group. Yeah, um, this gives capsopril. And in the last one, the DNA is whereby uh, the extension of structure they retain the CH3, um, and then there's a uh, extension of structure and also the um, incorporation of the pro-drug, pro incorporation of eta aster into the structure of enalaprilide to form the pro-drug. So these are the key development of captopril. I think you should um, know uh, this is essential uh, because this is a classic case study in medicinal chemistry. Pay attention to the uh, key events. Pay attention also to the... Um, um, the IC50 that tells uh, you um, which is more potent, which is less potent. Remember the concept of chili padi. Yeah. Um, and I think that's about it. Yeah. So I see you in class then.